In this video, we're going to be looking at magnetic declinations and how to calculate, dis or not distances, but angles and directions using a map. So uh, if you have ever done orienteering, this is pretty much what you're going to be doing. Uh, and this one just kind of takes it one step further. So I'm going to be showing on a map, on the, on the, the maps that we've been working with, how to use the, the diagrams that are on there. So if we go down to here, onto the map, you're going to see your magnetic declination diagram. And we're going to video in as close as we can so you can read it. So we can see that it is two minutes, or sorry, two degrees and seven seconds, or seven minutes, sorry, two degrees, seven minutes between the, the north, the true north and the grid north. And then we also can go between grid north and the magnetic north, and that is 18 degrees, 26 minutes. So it says here that the, uh, this is the approximate declination in 1979, so it's been a while since these maps were created, um, for the center of the map, and it's annually change, the annual change is de decreasing by 5.5 minutes. So we do know that, I, do, I am aware that things have changed a little bit. There has been an acceleration of the magnetic declination towards Russia. So these are just approximations. And so that's just something to keep in mind with the map as well. It is also only for the center of the map. It changes based on which direction you are going, whether left or right, or even up or down. So these angles can change. So to keep that in mind as we're working through this map and working with the, the information on this map, um, then it, again, a lot of this is approximation. But this is to show you an example of how to use the map if you needed to, if you got lost, for example, and only had a compass. So I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to draw from the Highwood River up here and I'm going to draw it down to the... Um, uh, let's just kind of choose a random point down to the silo. So we're going to go from here down to the silo. And the direction I'm going is going to be going to the southeast corner. Okay, so the direction is always important. So, um, so with this one, now I have my magnetic declination uh, diagram, that's what I'm looking for, right there. And in order to do this, I need a protractor. So we're going to go for a little walk, and we're going to go get a protractor, because I'm sure all of you guys have not prepared with a, a protractor like myself. And I've got one handy, and it's right here. So we <laughs> need a protractor, and what we're going to be doing in this one is lining up with our grid. So we know that the grid that is placed on this map, specifically the blue lines that we see on my map, that line up with these numbers up top, those are all related to the UTM coordinate system. And we'll be getting more into that as we go. But this UTM coordinate system is what is going to allow us to take our measurements and give us our lines that we're following. So my diagram that is up here is related specifically to these blue lines here. So I'm just going to draw a parallel line that goes from the top part of my, my map here to my line. And I'm following the grid lines. I'm, I'm off of the grid line, so I'm just having to parallel it. So now if I want to take a measurement from zero degrees, so the nice thing is I can put my protractor right on there, follow that line so I know that I'm staying with the grid, and then I can follow around my protractor to find out what my angle is. Making sure, if you haven't used a protractor before, make sure that you have the center, like the bottom point of your protractor on the, the angle center, and then line up your zero value with the line, the first line, and then we're going to go down to this one. So my specific line is at 138 degrees. So this is me going from A to B. 
that's my point. Now I know that going to my diagram on my map, I know that my, my grid declination, my grid declination is 18 degrees, 26 minutes. And I know that the angle between my true north and my grid north which is known as my convergence angle. So the convergence is known as, is two degrees zero two degrees zero seven minutes. Okay, so those are that's the details, and then I also know it's decreasing by five point five minutes. So we got lots going on here, and let's say I want to figure out where the magnetic declination is with respect to true north. True north in 2020. What is this azimuth for true north in 2020? So lots going on here, very few numbers that we start with. So now we just got to go from, move from there. So let's start with calculating what is the, the magnetic declination. So step one is magnetic declination for 2020. So my magnetic declination, I have my diagram. So I have my true north, grid north, and magnetic north. That's how it's set up on the map, minus scale. I have this angle. I have this angle. And it says that it is decreasing by 5.5. So my new magnetic declination is going to be somewhere in there. So starting with the, the values that we had talked about before, or the, not the values, but the steps, my first step is determine the time difference between, I think it was 1979 to 2020. So I go 2020 minus 1979, and that equals 41 years. Then my next step is to figure out what is the, um, what is the amount of change? So we go 5.5 minutes times 41 years. And using my handy calculator, that gives me 225.5 minutes. So that doesn't make sense to have it in that, so we need to divide this into, or put this into DMS. So 225 divided into, into 60, we end up with 3 degrees. So 225 minus 180 gives me with 45 minutes. So that gives me 45. And then 0.5 is 30 seconds. So that's the amount of change that we're seeing. So that is this angle in here. Then the next step is to figure out what is the original declination. So we're going to, in this diagram, we add my convergence angle with my grid declination. So we go 18 degrees, 26 minutes, plus the two degrees and seven minutes. And that gives me 20 degrees and 33 minutes. Okay, so that's the original declination, or sorry, grid, dec yeah, grid declination. Now the next thing is to adjust this grid declination so that it matches my, to here. So now what we're going to do is get true north to my magnetic declination, So, which means I just need to subtract that value because I just did this in C. That was C, step C. So I'm going to take 20, 20 degrees, 33 minutes, minus this change, which is 3 degrees, 45 minutes, 30 seconds. that equals 
because 20.33, 16 degrees, 47 minutes, and 30 seconds. Okay, so this value is now my full angle between my true north and my new magnetic declination. So that is this. That's what D is. Now we can add in this part. So that part, you got to take a look at what is happening on the map. I'm going to switch to red for this part so you can see it. So we know that from grid north, the angle was 138 degrees. If we wanted to figure out true north, and I know that I did a lot of steps, I'm going to, and we're going to also do magnetic declination to this too, just because it's fun. We know that the true north is over here. Does the angle between the convergent, or does the convergence angle change over time? No, it does not. So this was a really easy question to start with, and everyone's going like, why did you go through that? And it's just for practice purposes. Um, so if we go do this, all we're doing is just adding the angle, the convergence angle, to this angle here. That's all we're going to do. So my true north azimuth is going to be 138 plus 2 degrees 7 minutes, which equals 140 degrees 7 minutes. That is for true north. In both 1979 and 2020, it does not change. What does change, though, is the magnetic north. And the magnetic north is a little bit fun different because now the magnetic north is over here. So we have to do this a little bit different. We have to figure out what is the magnetic north for 2020 from the convert of the, the grid north to the magnetic north. So to do that, we're going to go back to all of these numbers that we have in here. We know that the original magnetic declination in 1979, we would have had to have subtracted 18 degrees 26 minutes. That would give us the original one. So if we wanted to do it that way, there's many ways of doing this, but maybe we'll just do it step by step this way. So I'm going to take my 138 degrees, that's an 8, and I'm going to subtract the 1979 angle out of that. So I'm going to subtract the 18 degrees, 26 minutes. So that becomes 119 degrees and 34 minutes, I believe. So this is in 1979. Then, we're going to take the, this value, and we know that it increased, right? It increased at a rate of 3 degrees, 45 minutes, 30 seconds, since 1979. So, and the reason it's increasing is because it's moving the opposite direction. Here was 1979, here's 2020. So this angle, 1979, was equal to the 119. So that goes from here to here. Now we need to add this component in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 119 degrees, 34 minutes. We're going to add the change over time. So that is 3 degrees, 45 minutes, 30 seconds. And that gives me 30 seconds, 45 plus 34 is 79, so that is 19, and then add 1, so that would be 123 degrees. Please check my math on your own side because I'm doing that in my head. But this is my magnetic declination for 2020 for the line between the Highwood river intersection there to the silo. 
So lots of steps in here. I know I added a little bit extra because of the me saying, hey, what is the, the true north? But we're actually looking, and then I changed it to magnetic declination and the magnetic azimuth. These are an azimuths. If I ask you to put it into quadrant bearings, you're now going to take these and you're going to subtract, take 180 and subtract them. So quadrant bearing, just a really quick review of that. 180 is minus a number. This puts it into the southeast quadrant. If you go um, number minus 180, that puts it into the southwest quadrant. And then 360 minus the number, this is going to put it into the northwest quadrant. So these, both of these are in the southeast quadrant, so therefore we're going to, to go um, 180 minus that, and that would give us our quadrant bearing. So true north, quadrant bearing, 180, so it'd be 40, 39, 50, so it'd be 39 degrees, 53 minutes, that is in the south east quadrant. So this is my quadrant bearing for true north. For this one, it's the same idea. B60, 50, 57, 56. Um, approximately 56. <laughs> just because I'm just doing this as a quick review. That would be for the quadrant bearing for this one. Okay, so taking that 180 minus the, uh, the value. So this is magnetic declinations dealing with azimuths and bearings. And so keeping in mind that this diagram changes depending on the map that you are dealing with, the, the change, rate of change can either be added or subtracted depending on whether it's increasing or decreasing. It could be back and forth. It could be, um, or sorry, not back and forth, but depending on your application, it's kind of varied. This is also an approximation on the map uh, because it is supposed to be for the middle of the map, not for anywhere else is the exact numbers. So this is, um, that's magnetic declinations in a nutshell in chaos on my little tiny whiteboard and from a map.